What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the studio. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Not bad, not bad. There's always that last minute technical stuff that we have to work What's out. Oh, I gotta mute this. Uh, there we go. Okay, so today's gonna be fun. Who do we got with us today? Oh, I see Alex is up. Nice, good to see you, Alex. Ooh, we got Ty the, si Ty the sound guy in the house tonight, too. We got the crew back. Nice. Very cool. Good to see everybody. So, oh, John changed. Wells in the I house. Can't hear you. <laughs> you lose me? But please proceed. Okay, I, got, I hear you, Matt. Again, if you see me looking back there, it's because the screen that he's on is behind me. Matt, hopefully he starts getting me. But Okay, so to recap, last week we started with doing some acoustic guitar. We have the Mini K47 and the Mini K87. We got to hear the difference on acoustic, some vocals with Anthony, some percussion. We even After we did a little shaker, we'll get some video of that out uh, at a later date. Today, what we're going to do is build on top of what we've already recorded. So we're going to start working on an electric version of this. So we have our acoustic one done. So today, we're going to start with the drums. We're going to use the acoustic track, the vocals from last week as our scratches. Well, actually, those, those acoustics are going to mostly live. Yeah, they're going to live on this. We're going to add a lot of electric and, and some bass and stuff in two weeks on the final one of these. But today, we're going to go through... Our, our drum sounds, we're going to hear the difference between the 40K, uh, the 47 and the 87 on the overheads because they are different. They give you different vibes. One isn't better. It's all about one, the preferences that you have that you want to hear sonically and also sometimes just what you need to do musically. I switch, but I use both of these mics as overheads a lot and I switch between them depending on uh, what we're doing, you know, what sound I might need. For instance, yesterday I had a drummer in the, uh, all day. We were doing t tracks for a new EP. Wanted a very organic, we were going for a very much how it sounds in the room kind of thing. I put the 87s up as overheads. That was like 75% of our sound. But last week, last weekend, we had the Coltrane Jazz Fest in with Lau Tizer's band again. And I actually had the Mini K47s up above the kit for two reasons. One, tighter pattern and get him down right over the drummer. And he's really busy and the 47s are really good with transient response. Almost, almost like small diaphragm kind of good with how fast they are. So th that's a couple reasons why I may switch between the two. We're gonna play a bunch of different things. We're gonna go through the cymbals, the toms and all that and let you hear to hear what you guys think. And I know Anthony, just from Soundcheck, he's got some opinions on what he likes too. So we'll, I mean, we'll hear about that. And then we're gonna talk about two other mics after we go through the overheads. One is the Mini K47 KD. That's the kick drum version, which is awesome, which is going to be active. And then we're also using one of the Mike Parts SDC 84 uh, small diaphragm condensers on the snare, which if you've seen some of my recent videos, you know I've been using that a lot, all the time. But we'll get into that kind of at the end. We're gonna start with the overheads. So I think first things first, it'd be a good idea to let you have an idea of what we have set up, because it looks, I'm looking at it right now, it looks kind of interesting. It's like Anthony's gonna have spaceships hovering above his head. You wanna cut to me in the, I'm gonna go in the live room real quick oh, yeah. and go through this. We there? Ooh, I still hear myself. Awesome. I should say too, I got Ernesto. Where, which camera am I on? Go, go to this guy, the, the main cam. I've got Ernesto in there running the switch, doing a great job. We've got a lot of moving parts in here. So first off, Start down here on the kick. That is the Mini K40, uh, Mini K47 KD. Matt's gonna sh got some images he's gonna show of this and talk a little bit about what the differences are. And I'm gonna let him get on the technical side because I don't wanna embarrass myself with that. I do have the, the snare mic, but what's going on on the overheads? Hey Ernesto, can you go to this side shot over here? Can he hear me? Okay, cool. So what, here's what we're doing. Uh, we wanted to keep setup simple and wanted to make this as is much of an apples to apples comparison so you can actually hear how each of these mics is uh, picking up the drum set. So what I've done is I have a, an 87 and a 47, 47 and an 87 hung both. These are in the a spot how I usually use my overheads, which I split the kit a little bit differently because it allows us to get a bit more toms, kind of mitigate some of the cymbals. Today it's going to help us be able to really hear 
how each of these mics gets the cymbals, gets the toms, and then actually the difference in the snare drum too, which was uh, uh, kind of ni nice to hear when we were doing sound check. So that's why they're both hanging off a stereo bar. They are measured from the kick and the snare, so they're pretty much equidistant from both of those. Our left and right should be pretty good. And yeah, that's it. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood what was going on here because it kind of looks, uh, it's like spaceships flying up there. It looks a little bit funky. So why don't we do this? Sir Anthony, he is knighted. I have knighted him. Why don't we just do a, just let's give him a taste and just kind of play and then we'll start breaking things down a little bit. And at any point, Matt can come in. Then we'll go through, I don't know which camera I'm on right now. So we'll, we're going to hear him play a little bit, and then we'll go through some details of the mics. Okay. All right, Anthony, you there, buddy? Sorry, I had his uh, his talkback here. You there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. <laughs> I forgot to mute his uh, his talkback mic there for a second. I was like, oh my lord, where's that coming from? <laughs> okay, first, just play me a little bit of the whole kit. I'm just gonna run. I'm gonna start with no no kick mic, no no snare mic. We're just gonna go through some overheads first, and I'm gonna kind of go back and forth, and then we'll record a little bit and talk about the differences between the two. On the full thing? Uh, just play around the kit. Yeah. Yeah. So 87s are what's live now. Go for it. Forty sevens live. Go to the ride, Anthony. Eighty seven. Forty seven. All right, cool, Anthony, thanks. So just, just those mics going, there is definitely a, a difference between the two. Hey, go back to that hot kick, snare, and hat groove. And I'm gonna start with the 47s. Let me kind of get some volume up here. Eighty seven. All right, cool. Thanks, Anthony. First thing I hear is th there's a difference. There's well, a couple things actually. Is the difference in how the the snare gets pushed with the forty sevens, and how it's a bit smoother and a little fatter with the eighty sevens which actually works out really well. Gives you two different, completely different tones to work with. And also in context, that's gonna change things a lot. Here, Anthony, let me, give me a second. I'm gonna pull up, we'll take that same spot and I'll just maybe run, I don't know, eight or 10 bars of it just to, just to play with the track just a little bit. So give me one second. One second, everybody. We're just taking care of a quick little technical glitch.
Okay, sorry, we got a little technical glitch trying to get Matt some audio back to his side. Ernesto's kind of working on that now, and we got Anthony up so you guys see him. Let's do this. Let's go, what was it, 211? There's always some technical stuff with this, man. There's so much stuff going on. All right. Let me get rid of these drums from sound check. Hold on. Bob, Bob. All right, we're there. All right, Anthony, that same spot, you're about four-ish bars from, and I'm just gonna have, let me make sure I got that turned on, and I'm just gonna have the overhead. So I'm gonna turn the track volume down a little bit, and I'm gonna flip through it, starting with the 47s for the overheads. You ready? Here we go. Cool, cool. I don't know if you guys can hear that difference. Just with the overheads, there's a, uh, a definitely a, a cut with the 47, and there's a fatness with the 87. Hey, you want to flip over to me real quick? Yeah, there we go. So you, you can hear Dutch the overheads. There's no kick mic on, no snare mic. We're only hearing going between the two pair of overheads a little bit. Hey, Anthony, one more time. I'm going to run just that same spot and keep, keep it on me for this time. I'm going to be talking in your ears, so just ignore me. You know the drill. Forty-seven. Eighty-seven. I saw what? <laughs> it's like pulling the brakes and you know, you're slam in the car and you slam against the the seatbelt there. Sorry. What are you guys hearing different? I can tell you for me, there's one that the, the 47 really cuts through that while the 87 has a bit more body to it. Not one is right or wrong. They're, they just have a different tone. And some of that, if you're doing a larger setup, your choice of microphone may depend on what else you have going on right there. But I also noticed the high, there's a definite change in the hi-hat tone. And I think Anthony, you said that was one of the things you noticed too when we were just listening back to Soundcheck, how different that sounded. Yeah, I was, I was, I was really stoked on the 47s. Uh, not that they sound bad, again, but the 87s just made everything sound like it blended together well. And I was like, oh my God, I was so excited about the 47s. The 87s as overheads so completely blew my mind. Because <laughs> last week he was all about 47 on the vocal, like the yeah, 47 on everything, the, uh, everything. the acoustic. Cause you, but your preference is, just so everybody knows, mm -hmm. you like things that are kind of coming at you. Yeah, I'm deaf. <laughs> <laughs> you are a drummer, so yes, there is that. No, I I, I, I like the I like presence boost in most things, and especially with drums, I like when it feels in the forward. Uh, so having the 87s was really actually surprising because actually, it brought like you said, like it fattened up the snare. All the things that I like about a kit, I never really think about. It did that with just the overheads. It was right. Cool. Yeah. Yep. So that is the first thing. Let's let's just hear the cymbals. I want to I want to see. I thought I saw John or somebody. Yeah, John says the 87s sound fuller, 47s have a little bit pointed snare. Yeah, see, the snare pops with the 47s for sure. Oh, we leaving this up for Matt? Okay, cool. <laughs> we're having some technical difficulties, so we're going old school with the, the cell phone is our communication right now. So he can hear what's going on. Alex said he preferred the 47 solo, but the 87 and the rough. See, and that's a, Alex, I'm glad you actually pointed that out because I think one thing for all of us, and I know I'm guilty of this sometimes too, when I'm, I may be looking for a new mic or something like that, 
is we tend to listen to things a lot in solo. You go check it out and you see all these things in solo, but context is everything because anything can sound pretty good in solo. And a lot of the times the differences of how a mic picks up any particular source may be pretty minimal in solo, but then you get it in context and it's all of a sudden now you really hear how those mics are, in this case, hearing the drums or like last week even hearing the acoustic. So that I'm glad you, you pointed that out, Alex. I, I think everybody should you know read Alex's comment right there. It's all about context, baby. Cymbals sound a little nicer in context with the 87s. Yeah, I like the smoothness of them. Now, one, one thing with the 47s that can be good, though, if you've got someone, it's busy. There's a lot of notes. You've got things going on. You need articulation. That's something that has impressed me about the 47 from the very, very, very beginning was how well they picked up the, uh, the transient response of the drum set, which was great. So that's something to keep in mind as we listen to this, too. See what your preferences are. Or maybe you need different sets of mics because you're at home, you're recording multiple people, so this gives you options. Like I said, Saturday, I had 47s overheads. Yesterday, I had the 87s as overheads. So let's just, since someone brought up the cymbals, I wanna just, just play me some, some cymbals. Go between the two crashes, the ride and the hats, and let's just hear how those sound different on their own. So right now I have the 87s live. Forty-seven. Hey, just do the hi hat. Oh, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm sitting there. I got the talkback mic on again. I'm out of microphones with on and off switches, so that's my bad. Engineering training here. Now I got the forty-sevens or forty or eighty-sevens live. Do that same. All symbols again. Forty-seven. So okay, thanks. So when he's doing it that way, again, this is my point of con like context is everything because the difference is it's there, but it's like this. Now play, do a uh, a groove with the ride, and then like go four bars on the ride, and then four bars riding on the crash, and kind of go back and forth, starting with the eighty-sevens. Forty-seven. Man, that's a big difference. Once you start playing the whole kit, all of a sudden those cymbals jump out in a completely different way than they did when it was just the cymbals. Do one thing we haven't touched on yet, and this is the, the next thing I want to get to, because this will tell us, for me personally, most drum sounds sound really good when they are... Uh, you're not your ears are not like right up next to the drums, right? You're back a little bit away from it. So this is where I think some of the good tom sounds come from, or at least the depth of our tom sounds is when we get those overheads blended in uh, with a close mic and a bigger setup. So let's hear now. Can you give me like a tribal groove and let's just hear how these pick up that low mid and that low end, starting with the 47. Anthony, 87. I'm going to turn him up. Keep going. 80, 47. 87. Two, three, four. Cool, cool. First thing that jumps out to me there is I hear a bit more of the stick on the head with the 47 so you get a little bit of that cut maybe you're in a dense mix or you've you're competing with lots of guitars or synths or something that will help that cut the 87 much rounder a little bit smoother sounding i mean the, they're designed different too but you get that more i'm gonna say natural i don't know if that's the right term to use but it is a bit more natural sounding i feel like the 87s kind of go this way where the 47 kind of moves forwards and towards you Charlie, so, Charlie, can you hear me? Yes. Right on. There you are. Talk to me. 
Yeah. No, the natural word is great. Totally great. Um, okay, cool. The, the big difference between these mics and uh, is that the 47 has uh, more color, uh, and that's coming directly from the capsule. And so the, the frequency curve of the capsule is what's letting the toms really speak. And I think that is a, I think your, your demonstration of this was really clutch because uh, it's something I've experienced as well, where that particular capsule really helps the toms sing out, uh, whereas the 87 is much, a much flatter, more neutral kind of response. Right. And that, that's, I mean, that's exactly how, I think that's the, the first time you ever told me about it. That's how you explained it to me. And just knowing that about the mics allows you to make decisions on what mics to use, which is good. And I see, Alex, you said you've also found it easier sometimes to goose a little brightness with EQ than it is to get body from an EQ. I agree with that. Because uh, once you start trying to dial in body, not that you can't, but you, there's a lot of things that start competing down there that can be a bit of an issue. However, I want to say this about the MK47. To my best recollection, in the last year or so of really using, maybe a little bit longer, of using those probably 90% of the time for my overheads, I cannot recall more than maybe one microphone. Once I got it, maybe it was on a, already on a bus or maybe it was on my master over here or something, but I already found that that mic, without having to do anything else, gave me the articulation on the symbols that I needed. There as well because Go for it. I have a thing about bright mics. Um, if I enjoyed bright mics, we wouldn't be here right now. Uh, it's because of my distaste for, for what I think of as bright or exaggerated microphones that I even got into the business. So I don't disagree with anything about what you just said about not having to boost high end on cymbals, but that's not because the K47 is bright, at least not by right. my definition, because typically something that's considered a bright microphone would be having a an exaggerated response at eight to 10 to 12 kilohertz. In the mini K47, by nine or 10 K, it's, it's neutral, it's flat in comparison to the one K line, which is, which is typically how you measure these things. So there is a boost in the mini K47, but it is lower in frequency. It's between four and six, maybe seven kilohertz. But and that's, so above that's seven, the articulation to me. That's what I yeah. like, because you're right. I didn't mean to make it sound like it's a bright mic. It is not exaggerated, but it's that four to five K that our ears are really sensitive in that area. That's that yeah, no, simple it, articulation that I love. It, I, I did not intend to correct you at all. I just wanted to make sure that anyone well, listening was aware of, of that <laughs> distinction. <laughs> oh, I need corrected sometimes. I totally know that. Anthony knows. He corrects me all the time. But yeah, it, it isn't a bright mic. You're right. I mean, that, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I didn't mean to make it sound like it's bright. I'm just saying that that mic already has that articulation and that that focus in the top end uh, that's there that I don't feel ever the need to do a little bit more. However, uh, the the 87 sometimes even using those in a dense mix, just a touch of a little EQ on the top, and that mic opens up very nicely. It all depends on what you want, Anthony. That's why I thought you were going to like the 47s because it was like, bam, right in your yeah. face. Let's see. I missed something. I saw someone. 47. Casper is welcome, brother. Good to see you. Yep, 47 is great. Symbols sound a little nicer in context with the 80. That John, the 87s. I kind of had a feeling some people were going to think that. But again, it's con context is, is a lot, too. If I was doing something heavy. Uh, like, for instance, the, the the death metal band I just did some work with uh, at the earlier in the year, Blood Feast Ritual, we used the 47s on the overheads because that stuff was so brutal and fast. I needed all that stuff to cut. I didn't want to have to work for it. And I did very little to them in the mix, and it just helped me get the whole kit. And I didn't do what most metal guys do, which is roll everything off the bottom. I actually left them getting the kit, and it really helped. So context is, again, I'll say it. I'm going to get T-shirts made. Context is king. Because it's very, very true. I'll buy that shirt. You buy that shirt? Yeah. <laughs> I'll end up having to give you one. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. I, I want to... We've got an idea now of what these... How, how these mics are picking up the kit. But we have a couple other things on there. And one of my, my favorites is on the kick drum. So, Matt, can you give us a little uh, rundown of the Mini K47 KD? Yeah, absolutely. 
Thank you. So uh, Mini K47 KD is a dedicated kick drum mic that we came out with. Um, it's really not officially released even yet, um, but we built a couple as one-offs for Charlie and a couple of other people who are in Dorsey's. And the feedback from those folks was really great. And one of the guys, uh, Andy Freeman, he's an engineer in uh, Nashville. I talked to him about it a while back and he said, uh, yeah, you can have that mic back when you pry it from my cold dead hands, that sort of thing. So he's really into it. And so we started out, that, that mic started out as a sort of a custom mod that we would do to the Mini K47. And then as we saw that there was actually a, a way to turn this into a product, and I, it's admittedly a niche product, right? Not everyone's got the budget to go out and, and drop, you know, 349 bucks on a kick drum mic. Uh, but for those that do, we wanted to build something that was special. And so this is a, a, a shot of the interior of the mic. So this is a, a new circuit board that we've come up with. These are all hand built in California. And the finished microphone looks like that. Sorry, wrong button. And so uh, these are, it's like a matte black finish, matte black grill. Uh, it's got the logo badge on the front. And so it is a, a dedicated kick drum mic. It is very similar to the Mini K47. It's got the same capsule in it. The circuit is, uh, it's related, it's similar. It's not the same circuit. Uh, we did some tricks to it just to make it better. Um, one of the things that we did was we reduced the low frequency filtering that is appropriate in the Mini K47, but not so appropriate when your job is to pick up low frequencies. So it's got um, less low frequency filtering in it than the typical Mini K47. And of course the gain structure is completely different because you need massive headroom for something like a kick drum mic. So, uh, so this mic is uh, officially to be released in about a week. Uh, we are taking orders for them on the website. Um, so if you're interested, let me know uh, and we'll be shipping these in, in about a week. I can tell you, I love it. And before I have, Anthony, turn. I'm going to say why, and then we're going to have. I'm going to turn this thing on, and we're going to hear this thing in action a little bit. But two reasons. In, in my normal setup, when I usually have some sort of inside kick mic, and I'll have that on the outside. Sometimes I'm even running three, depending on what I'm trying to do. But one thing I've always tried sub kicks and other things to get that like fundamental low that just like hits your chest or knocks a wall down, you know, or shatters the glass of the car next to you when you pull up to it at the stoplight. But I, I live a lot in the, the, the rock, the pop, and that that kind of thing, and a lot of double bass stuff too, where those the sub kicks have never quite done it for me because I've never quite got the night, the roundness of that low end that I like. I've built several, I've used several different uh, manufactured ones, and they're cool. They just never did quite the thing for me. And especially if there's a lot going on with the bass drum, those notes can get a little bit long and it gets a little money. The thing I really like about this is it's like the Mini K47, above it, above Anthony's head, it is pretty fast. So it gets, even if your bass drum patterns start to get busy, it still retains some note definition. And it's it's got a fundamental low note that is giant. And I love it. And it can take EQ well to shape it. Today, we have no inside kick mic. It is a single mic on the outside of the head. I'm going to turn that on now, and I, I have a little, I'm doing a little EQ, and I'll explain that in a second. I'm going to turn it off at first. We're just going to hear, I'm going to go with, let's go, let's go all 47s. So I'm going to go the Mini K47 KD and the 47s on other fades. Just give me a groove, play a little round, a little hi-hat, a little ride, a little toms. Just the kick mic. No kick mic. Not, yeah, stay on the hats. So this is just the kick mic. All right, Anthony, one sec. So just so you know where the placement is, we moved it around to a few different spots. A lot of the times uh, I'll have it kind of in the center. It's where the most pressure is coming off because I'm using another mic and I want it as big as I can uh, to blend with my inside mic. In this case, I was looking for a, a blend of getting a little bit of some slap. So I had a little bit of something to work with attack wise while still getting that low end. So I am about, I should have measured it, but I think I'm roughly 
two, two and a half inches from where the hole is cut. Can you go to that front shot mm -hmm. real quick? I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Kind of. But I'm only literally a couple inches away from where the hole was. And what I found is that closer I got to the hole, I started to get where the head kind of flaps a little. It gave me a little bit of mid-range to work with. How, how far is it? Two sticks? Barely. Like a stick and a half. <laughs> See, for drummers, you know, some people measure things in inches, miles, leagues. We measure things in sticks. Yeah, so about an inch and a half, you said? Yeah. Right in there, yeah. So it's pretty close down to where the hole is. It's not in front of the hole. That gives me a little bit something to work with. So play that same groove again for me. Now, EQ. Here's the whole kit. No EQ. See, it's like. Cool, thanks. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling a little bit of, again, I'm on the trident, so it's not exactly marked there, but it's right in that between three and 400, and I'm pushing some maybe, I don't know, probably around the 3K area. Here, I'm gonna mute play just to groove again. See the low? No EQ. Cool, thanks sir. So it gives you a lot to work with. If I was uh, using that in a larger setup, I probably wouldn't be boosting that much in the, the 3K. That's, I'd have another mic doing that and I'd let this mic just soak up all that bottom end. But in this case, and this is something Ernesto, who's sitting right behind me, has done before where we've actually used, you know, overdriven like the mic preamp to create some, you know, a little bit of harmonic distortion to get some cut. In this case, we chose to move the mic a little closer to the hole. So let's do, let's take that same spot of the song. I'm gonna start with the kick drum mic off. And let's see, is there a consensus? 47 is amazing. Well, I'm gonna keep it all 47s for now, just for a reference. And then I'm gonna turn the kick mic on, I don't know, a few bars into him playing. So, all right, you ready there, Bross? We're at the right spot. Yes, we are. Here we go. Yes, I love it. Awesome. So you can see it makes a huge difference and we have no inside kick mic. There is, you know, it just, it's got a nice huge round bottom into it. And with a little bit of EQ in the right spot, you can actually get it to slap enough. Now, would it be enough for a, you know, Slipknot record? No, you probably have another mic in there, but I quite often when I'm setting up my mics, a lot of the times my outside mic ends up being almost as loud as the inside and I just kind of tone shape it a little bit and you get these nice big fat round sounds. But like I said, my favorite thing, or probably at the top of my list anyway, is the fact that it's pretty fast. Uh, so you can use it in a lot of different styles of music. It works in everything from metal to, to a hip hop. If I, on the trend, if I started pushing bottom in on this, I'd probably blow up your speakers. So I'm not gonna do that to anybody but you can totally do that. John's question. What's John telling me? No, the sir, Matt, that'd be a question for Matt. Matt, I'm seeing uh, Sir John Wells, who I have knighted also. He asked if the circuit has any pre-EQ scooping in it. The Mini K47 KD circuit does not have any EQ in it really at all. Uh, it would be typical in a condenser mic circuit to roll off the top or the bottom end. And like I said before, we do very, very, very minimal filtering on the low end and, and really none on the top. So no, there's no 
there's no uh, EQ in the in the circuit at all. It's just uh, okay. what you're hearing is the capsule. That's what I thought. Now keep this in mind too, John, and everyone else listening. I chose a spot on that mic that's gonna give me a little bit of that slap, which is in the, the muddy area, which is why I pulled it out. If I move that back to the center, and I'm not gonna do that right now because we're gonna track this whole thing in a minute, but if I did, which is where we started at sound check, the bottom end was so round and large, it was almost, we would have been doing a hip hop record, you know, it would have been fantastic. Just for the rock tune, it didn't give me the cut. So that's why I moved it to an area that does have a little bit of more of that mud area, which is why I pulled it. Let me see how many times I can say area in the same sentence. I need an editor in my brain. <laughs> But that is, so here, let's, let's do, I'm gonna take the same spot. I'm gonna leave the EQ on. I'm going to start with the 47s and then I'm gonna to go to the 87s just so we can hear some context how that changes our sound. So same spot, Anthony, you ready? Yep. Here we go. Bono can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll never do that again. Man, it, even the, the you switch between the overheads, the perception of what happens even in the low end is quite different. It's pretty cool. It's too, man, it, it's just, I think our whole point that Matt and I wanted to try to stress when we did this is these are two different paintbrushes that you can use to get different sounds, completely different sounds, which ultimately for us, you know, as music makers converts into emotion somehow, you know? And these, just these two mics alone, you got different sounds with the acoustic, the drums, the overheads, the vocal. I mean, right now we did, this vocal was with the 87, right, Anthony? Yep. Somehow he let me talk him into doing the 87. We'll do a 47 at the very end too. Not today, but when we get done. That's- Can you talk about uh, position, overhead mic position already? I, I roughly went over that in the beginning. I don't know. Did I go over that, Austin? Did I talk about the position of the overheads? Oh, I didn't? It's basically an A B, right? Kind of a space pair. Yeah. Yeah, you talked about splitting the kit. Yeah, okay, I did. Okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, I did a little bit in the beginning. Thanks, okay, Anthony. cool. Thanks, guys. My memory, man. <laughs> so I was I'm gonna uh, mention one more thing. We had a question in the Roswell channel about the similarity or difference between the Mini K eighty seven and the Delphos two. And they are somewhat similar for sure. They both have a transformerless circuit, they both have a K sixty seven or K eighty seven capsule. We EQ them a little bit differently. We intentionally EQ the Mini K87 a little bit brighter. And when I say a little bit, I mean like one dB, maybe one and a half, somewhere in there. So the Delphos 2 is very, very slightly darker, might be too strong a word. More neutral might be a better word on the top end. The Delphos 2 is, of course, a three pattern mic. It's also mm -hmm. twice the size and three times the weight. Um, but one interesting possibility, and the reason I wanted to mention this, is that if you were interested in doing a mid-side sort of thing, you could absolutely do a Mini K87 as your mid and the Delphos 2 in figure eight as the side. And those would be pretty closely matched just in general because we, we tune them all and the target frequency response is so similar between the two. I've never tried that, and now I'm definitely going to try that. That's a great... That'd be perfect. Anthony, you and I are going to be getting together and geeking out soon. I was already, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, whoa. Because <laughs> the mid side can be a great way to record if you have a smaller space, too. So we'll cover that. We don't have time for that today. It's good but for me. Yeah. We'll, we'll get some video of that for sure. All right, Matt, last but not least, I think to, to round out the sound that we have today, we have not heard this mic yet. We have only heard the kick and the overheads, but oh. uh, the snare mic, I haven't even turned it on yet. You want to okay, let them no, know I, what it is? Yeah, I definitely want to hear it too. So um, so Roswell doesn't make a snare drum mic, but my other company, Mike Parts, does. And this is a, 
a microphone that you can buy as a DIY kit. If you like to solder, you can build this up from a kit. So we make the capsules, the metalwork, uh, circuit board, really nice transformer in there. And uh, we do sell this as a finished product too. Uh, let's see what we have here. So this is what it looks like. It's a small diaphragm mic, like 22 millimeters to brass body. Um, and then uh, I mentioned uh, in the first stream, I've been doing these DIY live streams. And I, I repeat it right now only to say that uh, the one I did last Saturday, I actually built this mic. Um, so that's this is what you're looking at as a screenshot of the YouTube landing page um, with the three live stream DIY things that I've done. And the most recent one was me building this, uh, what we call the SDC84 snare mic. Uh, you don't have to build it. Like I said, we can sell it as a finished product. So anyway, it's a condenser mic. It's based on the Neumann KM84. It's, it is the KM84 circuit, my version of the KM84 circuit. Um, we have a real nice transformer in there. Um, we do some gain staging inside the mic, similar in, in concept to what we do on the KD, because there are a few things in your studio that you'll ever record that are as loud as a snare drum from that far away. So <laughs> we have to pad that way down. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty cool mic. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from it. And hopefully it'll stand up you know, well in this performance. So let's hear it. It does, it sounds great. I mean, I remember when I just quick preface of, of kind of how that mic came around. I called Matt one day and I was looking for something different and I really wanted to try his SDC 84. And I said, will this thing handle a snare? And he's like, ah, I don't know. He goes, but I got an idea. And I was looking for something that's gonna help me get more body out of it. Cause a lot of times I'll still have two mics up on there for different reasons. And it replaced my 451B that I had used forever. And it just, it, it, it's got a little more girth to it. And whatever Matt did on the inside, it also tends to just handle the transient. And kind There's of a little bit of compression happening. And it works so nice. There's another video I did a while back, would have been probably early April, maybe March, where I, I had that mic on there and I have a section where I literally solo it up and show you the, the rejection with the Hyatt, which I'll do in a second too. The rejection is insane. So here, Anthony, give me just a kick snare hat groove, and I'm going to start with the, the snare mic off. I'm just going to roll, gently blend it in. Go for it. So just kicking overheads. Now the snare is in. Play open hats. See how, let me crank that up a little bit. The rejection's insane. Off. on this actually is one of, okay thanks anthony this is one of my if i've got to go minimal miking this four mic setup right here to me can get you almost anything you'll need if you have to be in the minimal setup now is it going to do a you know a sepultura album probably not but for the rest of us not doing that you there's so much you can do with a kick a good kick a good snare and a good pair of overheads and then it, it comes down to also a good drummer in this case because the blend really is all in anthony's control I can turn the overheads up and down, but I can't control how cymbals and toms and all that is blended and mixed. So that comes down to Anthony. Let's hear this in the track. We'll take that same spot. Ready? Here we go. What do I have on? So I am kick, 47s for the overheads, snare mic. No snare.
<laughs> nice. So the snare really adds a lot and the rejection, I get asked so many, so often about how I deal with hi-hat rejection in the snare mic. And it's a complicated question because you can't, sometimes your hands are strapped with the way the drummer sets up or the way the drummer plays, or, you know, there's so many variables to try to deal with that problem. But I will say that this mic goes a long way to helping me deal with that out of the gates, regardless of who the drummer or how close the hi-hats are to the snare drum or any of that sort of thing. So it's already on, by the, besides the fact that I like how it sounds and allows me to get some body out of the drum, and I can always boost a little on top if I need it, it's on my side when it comes to dealing with that pesky hi-hat. Look at John Connor. What's John telling me now? about that rejection as well this is a we use a hypercardioid capsule on the uh, snare mic and uh, hypercardioid is uh, basically a baby figure eight so you wouldn't want to put the mic and you probably wouldn't be able to position it this way anyway but you wouldn't want to put it so its butt end is directly pointing at the hi-hat you want it off somewhat uh, to make sure it's in the rejections you know the deepest null is going to be 180 you know plus or minus 30 degrees or something like that John, I think that he just answered your question, the tight polar pattern. Yeah, I failed to mention that, that it's hypercardioid, which helps a lot too. But the thing I liked about that mic is it gave me some body and I finally started hearing like the depth in my drums that in the snare that wasn't there and the rest I can do things to add that in. But getting that depth without having to try to manufacture it, especially if I'm not using samples, it's, it was imperative for me and that mic kind of knocked it out of the ballpark. So that's our setup that we've got going today. You got an idea? how the 87 and the 47 differ in their jobs as overheads. You have a, now you get a good idea of how that kick drum mic sounds too. It's got a lot of bottom. It's easy to shape that KD to what you need uh, to get out of the kick drum. Also great on a bass cab. Get some pretty fat bass guitar tones. Oh, you know what? We're going to add that in two weeks to our, when we come Please. in. Yeah, we're doing that in. So let's see, any last questions I missed? And then we're going to get Anthony to track. We're actually going to hit record and track part of this tune so we've got something to build on for two weeks. Well, a... With the gobos. Oh, yeah. You know what? Can Do we have a shot? I'm sorry, I'm looking back at the switch. Oh. Let me, yeah. I want, I want, this is important because I want everybody to know a couple things. I'm going to run in there. I'm going to move a camera. So now I'm a camera op. Am I in the union? Am I covered? <laughs> yeah, so what's uh, what we've talked about is um, trying to show cover. And this is what important the room sounds to like. understand the context uh, Charlie has a today. bigger room than I do, certainly. Oh. Um, and so Sorry, uh, I think where we started out, and we'll find out when the camera gets uh, put up, I think where we started out was with some gobos around the drums to try to dry up the room a little bit. Um, but there's, yeah, there you go. So, but you know, the, the microphones will respond differently in a bigger room. And so um, when it's wide open, and uh, I think that's a good thing to keep in mind for home recording is that your instrument does interact in a smaller room in a different way. And uh, so you might experiment with microphone height. Um, you know, the lower the microphones, the more drum sound you're going to get as related to the room sound. Meaning if you want more room sound, use higher overheads. Um, and then in a small room with the low ceiling, you'll get a lot of reflections into the back of the mic off of a low ceiling. So you, so that, and that probably won't sound good. So in that case, you probably again, won't have a lower overhead. So we'll see, uh, see how our time does on demonstrating that. Yeah, we, I think we, I think we could probably do that. We're, we're good. Cause we're getting down to kind of, we've covered everything we want to. The last thing I want to say about the setup, you know, besides the gobos, we have the, the rugs out there to dry it up. There is, no EQ except for the mini K, what I'm doing on the KD. Other than that, there's no EQ, no compression. You are hearing Anthony hit the drums, those mic pick it up. It's coming in on the transformerless part of the board. So I'm trying to keep this as pure to the sound that's coming out of the room all the way to the stream as possible. I'm not doing any manipulation whatsoever, except for, like I said, that one little bit of EQ on the 47 KD, that's it. So why don't we do this? Let's, I'm gonna hit record. We'll track a little bit of this. Maybe not the whole outro. We'll get that. You guys, we're putting a music video together so we're recording the entire thing after this, but we'll record a bunch and then I'll go move those gobos that are in front anyway, and maybe one on the side and we'll see how that differs in sound.
Going to the wrong spot. 211, not 21. Okay. I'm hitting record now, so now the red light's on, Anthony. Here we go. <laughs> Nice. I saw you guys, in case you heard uh, 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 the outro, I switched to the 87s on the overhead. Like, so drastic. Holy crap, it was crazy. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do, Anthony, maybe you could help me. We're just going to move these panels real quick. Matt, if you have, I'm going to look back at you because you're behind me on the computer. Anything else that you'd like to, to tell what's coming up or what you've got going or anything about these mics? It's going to take us just a minute to move these. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so uh, Charlie and I talked about some ideas about uh, minimal drum miking, and he mentioned as a four mic setup what he's got right there. Uh, but I also wanted to touch on another idea, which is uh, if you only have two channels, which is challenging, uh, but I think it can be done. And so, what I would recommend for something like a, a you know if you have a single mic interface or audio interface and only has two mic pre's on it. You can still record drums at home. I've actually done this with two USB mics years ago. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it can be done. But when I, the idea would be to have one mono overhead and the Mini K47, Mini K87 would, would work really nicely for that. And then you have options on the kick drum mic, which would be where the second channel would go. Um, and uh, Charlie's idea was, was interesting and it was to, you could use a mic like the KD and move it not right up against the head, but back a couple of feet because then it's really, it's a kick drum mic, but it's also like a front of kit mic. And so it's going to hear some of the toms and, and the snare as well. And this wouldn't be a stereo setup. You know, this would, this would be both channels panned center, but it would give you a little bit of opportunity to do some EQ uh, on the kick uh, as opposed to the overhead in order to get that, uh, you know, try to get a complete picture of the drum sound that way. So you move those gobos back? You move the gobos back, Charlie? You know, that's the second time I've done something like that today. I'm gonna have to find, I'm gonna have to pull a James Brown and find myself. I've made five bucks, you know. Ernesto, twice. do we have a shot of the live room? I'm just getting a group set up real quick. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we've got, now that all the gobos are out. Here, I'll go move the camera one time so everybody can see it. <laughs> a 
I muted myself and I muted everybody. Okay, so what we did is we pulled everything. So we're wide open on both sides. As you can see one camera, pan over here, the other camera. There are the two just in the back that are just kind of tightening things up. We're not gonna move those. I still have the carpet we left out. Not, and it's hard to see in this image, but it's a rather large carpet. <laughs> so it is taking up a lot of room. Well, so Anthony, we'll just do, I don't know, eight or 10 bars, cool. 12 bars, make it seem like you know what we're talking about. That drummer always plays 13 bars. What's wrong with him? <laughs> okay, let me get back to this top. All right, you ready, buddy? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's different. Wow. All right, let me put a loop up here. This section right here. I'm going to mute the track. And let's just listen to these overheads for a second. So here is the 47s. Let's see what comp am I on. Let me turn the groups on. Let me make sure I got my group set up. Come on. And there's this one bug in logic with the groups that drives me insane. There we go. Okay. There we are. Okay, so this is just the 47s, the mini K 47s on the overheads from our first take with the Gobos. Here's take two with no go boat. That's an, one thing about the 47 is it's pretty tight. There's a difference. I hear when it goes to the tight hat, I can hear the tail on the snare from the room, but it's not crazy. We're in the corner too, which is a little different. So here is, I'm going to shorten the open hats up a little bit. Here's the 87, take one with go. Take two, no gobos. Oh yeah, you can hear it here. Thing is, I still have the rugs out there, so it's drying up a little bit decay time, but I can definitely hear it there. What in, about context? Let's see. Kick drum. Uh, I'm going to leave the snare out for a second. So here's a little bit of context. And let me go. This is Mini K87 overhead, take one with Gobo. Not a giant difference. I don't know if you're hearing it back there. What are you hearing, Ernesto? Not that much. Yeah, not that much. Probably, like I said, I still have three rugs. Well, four, technically. There's one even off camera that you don't see left over from a session yesterday. So it's not a huge difference. But when I would set the, the kit up in the middle of the room, which we do sometimes, or not the middle, but over, uh, not in the corner. <laughs> I don't know how better way to explain that. You can, you can hear it a bit more there, but... I would agree with what Matt said about like the height of your overheads can have a big difference on whether you're getting some room sound or you're getting a tight sound. If you have a smaller room that doesn't sound good, the closer you can get them, the better. You know, if you've got a big open room and you like the way it sounds, you know, condition that you want. Right now, not a gigantic difference.
How we doing? Matt, how you doing there, buddy? We're doing good. Um, I, think, uh, I think we're pretty covered, right? Yeah. I got all the stuff that I wanted to kind of cover today. You feel like we got everything you wanted to cover? Yeah. No, definitely so. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Make sure I didn't miss any questions here. Hashtag no gobo. Alex. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get that trending on, on Instagram. <laughs> no one will know what it means. Hashtag no gobo. They'll be like, what? This guy on drugs? But you guys want to say thanks for joining us for the second episode. We are going to build on this in two weeks. We won't do one next week because it's Thanksgiving. So we'll be back in two weeks for the final one when Adam's going to join us again. Right, Anthony? Yep, correct Amundo. So he'll be back. So Anthony will also and Adam will both be recording some guitars because that guy out there in the library right now plays so many freaking instruments. It's not even funny. <laughs> All really good. And as partner Adam will be doing, uh, who's doing bass next next time? Probably me. Probably you. <laughs> yeah. See, the, he's, he's a one-man rhythm section. So we're going we're gonna to build on this drum track and this acoustic track with some electric bass, electric guitar. And then we may even do one more vocal with the 47, so we have both. We'll see. But that's in two weeks, right, Matt? Two weeks, December 3rd, I believe. Yep, that's the final one. So go to roswellproaudio.com. There is a newsletter you can sign up for. So you can get, you send out news updates for all this, right? Yeah, we'll definitely do a newsletter before the next one. Perfect. So go sign up for that. Check these mics out. Let us know, you know, what you think. There's some great comments, you know, I'm seeing on our channel. And I know, Matt, you've probably got some good ones over there, too. So it's, we really appreciate you all taking the time out of your day uh, to uh, evening to join us for these things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Right on. Cool. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Have a great night.